one to two. Now we so, do. So I did not go through the 80s, uh, as you mentioned, because I was still in the university. So my look into this matter is a fresh one, in the sense, uh, for me, the first one, for you, is this maybe the second one. So let's see which is the question. I think today there is no discussion about the fact that space is a pervasive economical infrastructure, because we have in the pockets, uh, we use it a lot, so there is economy, yes, for sure. But uh, there is something new about that, uh, that we talk about new space economy. Uh, what is a new space economy? Is we're moving from a space manufacturing economy more and more towards a service-based space new economy. And we know what new economy is, because the new economy took place uh, on the internet, on the, on the software, on the services already. It got through bubbles, it exploded, but now we have uh, Google, Internet, and so on and so forth. So it did work eventually with something which changed the world. So calling for a new space economy may bring us to bubble uncertainties, but some of it will survive, and we believe that will be the case. Uh, so which is the role of the agencies? This is the quote question about this segment. So I put it new in parentheses. Some of it is old, always been like that. Some of it may be uh, uh, different. So regulatory, I mean, regulatory clearly is something which either the government does or nobody does. And talking about industry, regulatory part is important. With, if you don't write something, some rules, some laws, uh, there is no economy following it. It, it, it becomes kind of, it, it, it will not work. So the uh, question is uh, how the space economy will in the, in the future, what the agency can do. <laughs> Things like lowering technical barriers related to the exploitation of space technology, yes. This helps. Uh, improving general market conditions, establishing a favorable regulatory framework, yes, this helps. Addressing the matching of demand and supply side of the value chains through suitable pub public, pub public partnership, uh, also this will help. But uh, if you ask somebody which has a capability to look forward, like this guy, he will say, imagination is more important than knowledge. So if you look into that, uh, innovation is part of the game. So supporting innovation is part of the game, and agency can do that, not uh, create innovation, support innovation. Uh, for instance, these images belong now to history. They happened in the last uh, 12 to 18 months. They completely change our way to look to space. There is no discussion about that. Each of those images are in our mind, because uh, really something has changed. It's not only about Elon, there could be additional images, but people like him, Blue Origin, Virgin, and so on, are giving some messages that something is happening right now. Oh, like this one, miniaturization of, you got in miniaturization of computers, to nothing. Cell phone, they stop to size of hands, because we have to push buttons, but could be much smaller than that. Satellites, uh, this is a real revolution going on. In this list, uh, there is a 13 design of uh, the Dove satellite by Planet Lab, the one which was launched at the beginning from the space station from Nanoracks. 13 iterations in a few years. Several constellations have been built and destroyed, built and destroyed and replaced. Now I think there is a something like 100 operating in space. This is a revolution. It happened overnight. They started in the, in the 2010, they, they launched the first satellite in 2014, and now they are uh, basically providing a capability of looking to the, to the Earth one, once a day, everywhere, once a day, everywhere. This is a revolution. It happened. It did happen. It's a success. It's already a new space economy. It's not a bubble, because it's providing information to everybody. Um, then, new role for agencies, security and defense, of course. This is a typically government-related business. Security and defense, they're not the same thing. Security is protecting border from migration, is, is looking to emergencies, all kinds of stuff like that. Defense is something else. And honestly, this is a very touchy point, because today, in these very last months, or maybe less than a year, the uh, in, uh, uh, emphasis this, uh, uh, about uh, making more defense-related space activities. 
has grown dramatically. And I think around this table, there are many people which have worked for the last 50 years to make space a peaceful environment. And this is a change which does involve government. You like it or not, but USA, Russia, China, even EU are looking to defend in space more and more attentively. And this is something which we have to be... I personally believe to be worried about that because space is a very fragile environment. If we mess up in space, everything is destroyed. If you start creating a lot of uh, damages, fragmentation and so on, you are damaging yourself, uh, and, but this is the way things now are, are taking. So this part is a kind of dark part of space, government rules and, and government role, uh, but we have to, to deal with that because clearly it's taking more and more momentum. Now, four, infrastructure. I think this is quite clear, has been said repeatedly. Creating and maintaining infrastructure is a role that agencies do much better than private. It can be exceptions. Somebody mentioned about highway with some toll system, which has been, yes, for sure. You can build up on secondary infrastructure when the, fr the primary infrastructure are available, but space infrastructure is something which you need. Europe has been doing quite well on Galileo, quite well on Copernicus. There is a strong effort to make accessibility to space uh, on the investment on the various uh, uh, sat um, uh, rockets, which are being, uh, becoming a family, the Ariane, the Vega C, Vega E, the future evolution of that. This is something where the public sector in Europe is investing very strongly because it's an infrastructure. Access to space in Europe is not a private effort. The commercialization of that is a private effort, but building up the, the, the capability is clearly something where uh, uh, the, um, the government and the agency do a lot. Or Earth observation satellites, uh, which can provide uh, a tremendous amount of data. The production of the satellite, the creation of the condition to get the data is an infrastructure which typically in Europe is provi provided by either agency at national level or European level. Using the data is something else, is where the business is built, where the companies come in, and where the investment may, may, may be done. Example, this is a, the mapping of a country like Italy uh, using a Cosmos SkyMed uh, uh, radar data, uh, which can you do in, with interference, so you can get very precisely the, mov the movement, the displacement over the, of the time. And this is the, infa the infamous bridge in Genoa that has been monitored for the last 10 years. Uh, all these points are permanent scatterers. You can appreciate the movement by millimeter per year type of a velocity. With this kind of information, you try to monitor every single building, every single bridge, uh, and this is a technology which can really pro be provided only through investment on in infrastructure by a government, which uh, then can be uh, provided to uh, companies to make the analysis, to price services, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, international collaboration. Uh, Charlie was extremely right in recalling that uh, space has allowed for bridging across boundaries. Like science, you know, uh, in the Cold War, nuclear physicists were talking through the, the, the boundaries. Uh, 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 International Space Station was born through the Cold War even, and has been a great success from the political point of view. But in general, space is a boundless type of activity which has a tendency to bring people together and also government and, and agencies together. Uh, I give only one example because uh, uh, I think has been mentioned several times today. It is China. I mean, China, there is a discussion that uh, is evolving very quickly into space, investing a huge amount of resources. China is doing that alone. Why that? Because it's been excluded from the International Space Station, has been repeatedly asking to, to come in has been repeatedly refused because of political reason. And eventually, if you have uh, an enemy and you keep hitting on him, it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger, and eventually he does it by himself or itself. Now, having said that, if we look forward, there is no discussion that unless we are totally crazy, the next step of our exploration has to go through a global effort, a real global effort. It's impossible to think that the world is defined by a boundary which is coinciding with International Space Station uh, participation. It's ridiculous. It was uh, 30 years ago. It's not anymore today. So I know that it's not easy 
but we should aim to continue to work in this direction with China, with India, with whoever is really making a strong effort. Because, again, if you have a competitor or an enemy, you better talk with him. If you keep him aside, eventually he will become stronger and stronger and stronger. So this is uh, Samantha Cristoforetti participating uh, as a ESA astronaut to discussion with the Chinese uh, uh, counterpart, I mean the Taikonaut. And this is a station which is built, built uh, by, by China. And uh, in, in Italy, we are making a very strong effort to collaborate with China on uh, providing part of the hardware for the space station because we believe that this is really something which we do not only for us as Italian agency, but for ESA and eventually for the entire community. And uh, we are strongly pushing toward having one edge which is fitting the standard of the International Space Station edge to allow eventually, in a day which I cannot anticipate, the possibility to make this kind of international connection. So international collaboration is typically something that only agencies can do, only government can do, and agencies can anticipate something which poli politics which eventually follow. Now, uh, then at the end, economy. This is a topic for this discussion, space economy. So let me spend a few words about that. So I like to show this one because it's the day uh, about a year ago, one and a half year ago, where Avio, the Italian company producing the Vega, went to the stock market in Italy. Uh, why is it so, so strange? Because if you look around, there are no rocket producing companies on the stock market. For Various reasons, because they belong to the government, because they belong to a family, no matter what. This is the first one we went to stock market by selling a product which is not, which is, which is strange, rocket for civil application. Okay? And this was a result of an effort which went through many months and, uh, and years of discussion through ESA effort, but as a matter of fact, this is a piece of space economy. Rockets are becoming commodities. Um, Second example, Space Rider. We were talking a lot about uh, Space Pharma, uh, making things on the station and so on. Uh, we are, as an Italian space agency, pushing very strongly to this development, which is a, a, a small shuttle with an engine, which coming from the Vega, all together making a, a device which can stay about four months in space and then land, and then be reused. Four months in space and then land to be reused. The first prototype has been flown in 2015, was called IXV, and this, this device has about one cubic meter of space and 700 kilograms. Does it sound familiar? Does anyone need 700 kilograms or one cubic meter to produce fibers in space uh, or uh, hundreds or thousands or, 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 or biological samples and bring it back? So in, in, in three years, because this will be at the next ministerial, you will have uh, a device which has been conceived basically because of space economy, to provide a significant size out, stay there, and in. Uh, and uh, you will have also clearly motivation for in-orbit servicing, test, uh, scientific research, and so on. But since we talk about economical consideration, this is exactly what you need to bring back what you build in space. Um, space economy. Uh, it's interesting to look to some numbers. This is a chart where there are some numbers, which is a, is a few years ago, but you can get the feeling. The first column is the total value produced uh, in billion uh, 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 about space uh, production. The, various the world is a little bit outdated, but you can see the, the ratios. Italy, France, UK, in Germany, you can see some numbers. Then the second, quest the second is uh, the fraction, which is coming from institutional market and fraction which is coming from the private market. Look to UK, only 10% is coming from the institutional market, and the remainder is coming from the private market. Look to Italy, 60% come from the institutional market, and the remainder come from the private market. So if you make the ratios of those numbers, you see certain count central countries have space which is more already today or yesterday related to the private market and needs some other which are much more uh, linked to the public investment. And Italy among, among those, the European country, is the one where the public sector is investing more with respect to the other one. This is why 
uh, two years ago, we were able to, start to convince the government to start a fairly ambitious uh, space economy plan, which is heavily based on large-scale public-private partnership. Uh, about a total 4.7 billion of euro have been uh, put on the, on the table uh, on a certain schedule, of which 1.1 is already available, and the idea is 50% is public money, fresh money, coming from the government or from the regions, and half of it is coming from the companies. And altogether, they are aiming to various pillars to anticipate market needs. And how does it work? It is a program which lasts for 12 years. So you, des you decide a topic, you make a competition, you find the partners, and then for 12 years, uh, in various phases, uh, you first of all meet uh, needs and uh, demand and offer. You make sure that the two parts work together in order that there is no misunderstanding between who's putting the money and who is, is going to pay for the service. But eventually, you, you ensure the service will be there for about 12 years. So altogether, it will last more than that. And in this way, uh, we, 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 be, we have started already the first phase of that. And in this way, we believe uh, we can anticipate market uh, sharing the risk between public and private partnership. Other things which we are doing uh, is uh, starting the first European Space Economy Expo Forum. We need an environment where to discuss that with companies, with customers, with companies not coming from space, with companies which would like to be interested in participating and making use of space. And the second thing is launching the, the first space venture capital fund is called Astra Venture. It is uh, aiming basically to, uh, to the early stage uh, and a little bit of seed, uh, the, 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 the part which is typically not covered very effectively. Venture capital, as been said several times, is a risky business. But uh, it is where companies can provide the result if you are picking them carefully, making a good selection, and making uh, the uh, correct size investment. Okay, so just to conclude, the same guy, he said that he never think to the future is coming so quickly. I think he was totally right. We will not know what happened tomorrow, but we know that it's coming far more quick than we can stand. Thank you so much. Thank you.